I'm gonna sound a bit like a boomer in this opening. Time to shake my cane angrily and fuss at the neighborhood kids innocently playing ball outside. If there was once upon a time where when you bought a game, that was the game. I'm old enough to remember this era of gaming. I grew up in it. In the olden days of cartridges and discs, there was no updating the game with new features. The game was all in one, self-contained. If you didn't like the balancing, tough luck. If the game had bugs, they became unremovable features. Quite literally, in some cases, rendering a game incompletable if the bug was produced during gameplay. If you think games nowadays can be messy, try growing up in those times. No, I don't have an old man voice that was the best I could do as a boomer take. But jokes aside, it's all true. There really was a time before the great internet boom where games delivered as an as-is service. Not because companies were too lazy to patch, fix, or update their games, but because of the limitations of the time. Games were not online yet, there was no great way to do this. I saw the introduction of internet into gaming at large, and slowly but surely saw the changes take place over time. My own first real experience with what the internet could mean to gaming as a whole was with the Xbox game Halo 2. There were exploits patched out of the game, there were map packs released, and there were online leaderboards. There may have even been balance changes if I remember correctly. In my life, this was the start of live service games. The combination of large scale user side storage along with a growing booming internet meant things were changing. Live service became the way and with it came the ability to change the fundamentals of a game at the very core level. No need for reissues, no need to simply wait for the sequel and hope the sequel to be better. No, your experience could be upgraded, patched, and tailored as the gaming company saw fit. Live service models are ubiquitous in gaming today, and it's brought a host of other things along with it, including microtransactions. But, while microtransactions deserve a whole discussion of their own, the topic I want to discuss in this essay is less about that side of the live service model, and more about the arguably good side, and what I believe to be some of the missed potential of it in Genshin Impact. I mean, look, I'm a gamer through and through. There's really no genre I won't play, from fighter to MOBA, racer, shooter, adventure, you name it. There are some games that come and go for me, either due to them being single contained experiences with minor replay value, or because I just outgrew my love for them. But there are some games that outlast others. An example of this for me is League of Legends. I've been playing League for ages. As big of a headache as that game can be, I do keep coming back to play it often though. Albeit nowadays for fun with friends, mostly, but still. And you know, it's almost a wonder how it hasn't gotten completely stale to me yet. But it's not completely shocking when you consider the game releases new characters often, completely rebalances the 160 plus character cast to make certain characters fall out of favor and give others a time to shine, and the fact there are seasonal cosmetic rewards for achievements like good rank, or even now with the 3 honor skin line, good behavior. Items change, the map itself changes. Riot does work pretty hard to make sure things don't get stale for long. And considering how many people can't seem to drag themselves away from League, 
me included. I'd say it's working. That's the good side of live service. It can continue to offer players ever-evolving and ever-changing experiences, adding new content to the mix while perfecting older content and keeping it relevant. What about Genshin Impact's case, though? Well, let's be completely fair here. Genshin has updates. Lots of updates. In fact, one of Genshin's biggest strengths is its steady stream of updates. Opinions of the game to the side, one thing that can't be argued is that the game never updates. It indeed does, with new regions, characters, and events all the time. There is a debate to be had about the need for more in-game content. I myself am of the opinion that it could use more. But, for what the game is and not what I necessarily want it to be, it updates, yes. It really does. However, it would be remiss of me to not mention the other side of that. Updating what's already here. Mm, yeah, you see, as many new and rotating things as there are that are added to the game, there are several systems in here that, once the player has interacted with them to the fullest, become completely obsolete. One such example are the one-time domains. It's always cool seeing these undiscovered on a brand new map expansion, but once you interact with these, they turn into glorified teleport waypoints. There's just nothing to do with these husks anymore. At the very least, you can re-enter these domains and go through them, but what's the point? The reason I opened this essay talking about older, non-patchable games and then compare them to modern era games in which patches and live service are the norm was to highlight that there's really no reason for Genshin to do nothing with these old domains. If Genshin was an old game, it would be understandable. It would be expected for that matter. But it's not. It's a game in the modern age where the internet exists. And this is what I meant earlier by missed potential. So, what am I talking about here? Uh, surely I must have some examples or brainstorming that I can put forth to better illustrate my point, correct? Well, sure. One such thing that could use some revitalization are the regional shops. You know, the shops you give your sigils to for various things, including ascension materials, billets, etc. It's a shame that once you dry up all the chests in a region, these shops just become pointless. While you can exchange sigils for extra mora once the shops are bought out, giving them some kind of long-term plan, the fact of the matter is even sigils are finite. Once you get all the possible chests, even the mora becomes unobtainable. Some kind of future way to earn sigils even past the chests would be amazing. And as for incentive to actually care about earning those sigils, the sigil shops themselves could restock every patch or even every other patch with various things, from furnishings to billets. If they really wanted to, they could even make each regional shop rotate with different things incentivizing you to check in every patch to see what it is this time. This month, Mundstadt's sigil shop has a customizable Viridescent Venerer artifact where you can choose the main stat. Leeway's shop has a Northlander billet. Inazuma's has Inazuma furnishings. Sumeru has a Midlander billet. Whatever the case. And then next month, Mondstadt has some kind of billet instead of the customizable artifact. Liwe has furnishings. Inazuma shop has a customizable Emblem of Severed Fate artifact where you can choose the main stat. You get the idea. 
There would have to be some kind of way to get these sigils once the chests are gone though. But you know what? I have the perfect idea for how to come across the sigils. And it involves revitalizing another abandoned system. The old one-time domains. That's a perfect way to do this. Think about it. Every month, the one-time domains across the map open up for a once-per-patch clearing. You can choose the difficulty levels, and depending on how hard you make the domains, that's how many more sigils you get when clearing them. Up the difficulty tenfold and make the enemies inside as difficult as local legends. The difficulty selection thing is important because it still leaves newer or inexperienced players a way to earn the sigils, just not in as high volume as someone playing the domain on local legend difficulty. But over time, they'll still be able to earn the same rewards. After getting these regional sigils from the one-time domains, go and spend them in the regional sigil shops for the various restocking rewards I mentioned even if those rewards rotate out every patch. There you have it. Two abandoned systems, old one-time domains and sigil shops, revitalized with one unified system. Think about it, wouldn't something like that be cool? It would also give you reason to visit the older regions more often too, which is a topic I discussed in my essay titled The Open World Perspective of a Day One Player. I would love to go back to these old domains for sigils, and then use the sigils at the sigil shops for cool rewards. There's just no reason in this day and age to not do something with systems like these. In-game players have been clamoring for extra content other than the Spiral Abyss to keep them busy. The old domains? A perfect place to start, and something that doesn't even have to be built from the ground up. These are already in the game. Clearing the domains for sigils and then using them for special rotating rewards in the sigil shop is just one brainstormed idea. They could do anything, speed runs, or a room by room boss run similar to the ascension quest. As long as there's decent challenge and some kind of incentive, be it custom artifacts or something like prima gems. And yes, I'm bold enough to say Primo Gems, they do it in the Abyss after all. Uh, but yeah, it's, as long as it's some kind of good incentive, then it could be a good way to breathe some life into those areas. Heck, they could even put in teapot furnishings or name cards. Uh, I don't know anything, just something. I think it's a cool idea. There's still other systems in the game too that have just kind of been abandoned or more so left unutilized after the player cleans them up. Reputation could use a furtherance, not just for the current region but for all regions. I'd be happy if every so often they added new reputation levels to the regions. Doesn't even have to be all at once or anything major, just sprinkled in over time. A couple more Mondstadt levels added this patch, maybe another Inazuma level added next patch, you know, just in general. It's crazy to me that this system doesn't expand upon itself more. Raise the caps and make all the regions relevant again. The bounty types are cool, but expand upon that as well. Do something with this cool system. The fact that there's just nothing left to do with any of the reputation institutions after you're done is such a missed opportunity to give the player some good live content. There's just no reason not to. There's also the various trees and reward zones in the game, such as the Sacred Sakura, the Tree of Dreams, the Fountain of Lucene, once they're max, they're max. And I get it, that in itself is an achievement. Literally, you get achievements for this stuff. But isn't there something long term that can be done with these systems? I don't know, I haven't even brainstormed a way to make these work in a forward looking way, so maybe I'm grasping a little bit. 
but I feel like this is an unexplored system in some ways too. Point is, Genshin is a live game. It's not a cartridge game I plop into my Nintendo 64 and have to play as is. Genshin is here on the internet ran as a live service. That isn't to say the game doesn't update, I mean again it obviously does. The map and the story, the events, it's all top notch stuff and we do get new stuff all the time. But some of the older in-game systems could use some love and that would help invigorate the gameplay itself. There's just no reason not to, I've said that many times. The capability is here because this is the internet age, and one of the main benefits of a live service game is the capability to offer players ever improving experiences. A common sentiment by many players is that they want both intrinsic and extrinsic reasons added to their gameplay loops. And while the framework for that would have to be drawn up, sure, in whatever way that may be, there's things here already that could be expended upon to achieve that. That's why I don't believe it to be an extreme undertaking to find a way to offer these requested experiences. They don't have to come up with anything new too much in order to provide us with these repeatable experiences. Work with some of these abandoned systems and throw just a little incentive in for the player behind it and it could go a long way into providing more satisfying gameplay loops. Just in today's age where we can actually improve a game for years to come if we really want to, I don't think there's any point in letting the systems beneath it all go to waste. The old domains, sigil shops, reputation, there are some really great frameworks here to build that ever-evolving game with, if they're just reimagined a little bit to be ever-evolving, and not the stagnant husks they are today. That's all it takes, a little reimagining, forward thinking, and the will to make it happen. Oh, and of course, the internet to actually, uh, you know, make these kind of life changes possible for everyone. Unlike the olden days where that wasn't even possible to begin with. Thanks for listening.